first time I visited Rolling Hills was at Alera Farms in Cool Springs when they met Thursday nights in the clubhouse. It was a very intimate setting. There was about 20, 25 people there. And they were all full of energy, very, very welcoming. You know, I thought it was very, a very different experience, but I, I felt like it was, uh, you know, there was a lot of energy, positive energy. I was a little nervous at first checking it out, but you know, as soon as I got there, everybody was super nice. Everybody was very passionate. The Holy Spirit really was present every time I came to visit. From Alara Farms to the Marriott, just seeing the church continue to grow. You know, the, the momentum was definitely there. I, I, it was neat to see so many different people, new people coming every week. What kept me coming back to Rolling Hills was that the people from the time you pull in the parking lot here to the time you walk in the door, someone's making you feel special and you, you feed off the energy. I definitely feel like the community here at Rolling Hills has, has helped me with my walk with Christ. Yeah, you know, looking back, you know, from the early days of the church to where we are now, you know, I knew that God was doing something special at Rolling Hills. The church is continuously, you know, challenging you to, you know, reach out, grow up, and give all even you know, back then, even through to today. And it's, you know, the church has definitely challenged me to be a better person, a better Christian, a better husband, a better father. The church has equipped me to do that. And it's neat to know that our DNA has never changed, you know, from day one. And that no matter how big we get, we're not gonna lose our identity. Uh, well, good morning, good morning, church, and happy new year. I'm mean, so excited about this new year and what God's going to do, and I pray that in your life, this is your best year yet, and such a blessing to be on this journey together. You know, as a church, it's 15 years this month, and so we are excited about that and celebrating together our 15th anniversary, and, and we had 15 people met in an apartment clubhouse, did a Bible study, you know, and on Thursday nights, and just to see what God's done, it's just Miraculous, and it's so fun to be a part of what God's doing. And anniversaries and birthdays are great. I mean, I love celebrating birthdays. I love celebrating anniversaries. I hope you do too. But they're a great opportunity for you to kind of look back, right? Look back at what's happened in your life and go, hey, this is what's been going on. And then kind of see where you are, evaluate where you are, and then to look forward and say, hey, what's getting ready to happen and what's going on? Because all of us, all of us have a story, right? All of us have a story. And I want you to know that it's important to know your story. It's important to know your story. Like, what is God doing in your life? What are your spiritual roots? What has God done before? Maybe you grew up in a great, you know, family. It was just spiritual. And then they loved the Lord. They took you to church. Or maybe you had a, a tough family situation. But, but what happened in your life when you came to know the Lord? And it's important to know your story. It's important to know where you've been. But it's important also to evaluate. And to look and say, hey, what's going on in my life now? Like, where have I been? But where am I now? Where are you today? And, and I think that's important for us to say, I want to be open. I want to be honest and evaluate, where am I today? You know, what's happening in my life? What's happening around me? And, and am I growing like I'm supposed to be growing? Am I where I thought I would be? And then also in your life to do this, to know where you're going. And so birthdays and anniversaries to me are so excited because you kind of have this opportunity to, to look back and to celebrate, to remember, to evaluate, and then to look forward and say, hey, what's getting ready to happen? What's going on? And I pray for all of us that we would reach our full potential in Christ. I pray that we would live our lives for the glory of God. I pray that we would make the most of our opportunity to really make a significant impact in our day and our generation. And a lot of times what can happen is we get busy, busy, busy doing a lot of different things and we just kind of drift, right? And, and we drift and we wake up, you know, a year from now, or five years from now, or 10 years from now and we go, well, how did I get here? 
I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be there. And, and the only way that we stay on track is by keeping focus on the Lord and saying, hey, I want to remember, I want to evaluate, and I want to go forward in Christ. And I want to make the most of the opportunity that God's given me. You know, it's been an exciting 15 years here at Rolling Hills, but I believe our God's just getting started. Well, that's what I believe. I believe that God has brought us together from all over. Maybe this is your first week at church, or maybe you've been here 15 years, but God has brought you here for a reason, for a purpose. And as we lock arms and serve God together, it's going to be so exciting to see what God's going to do for his name and for his glory. So let's get ready, because the best is yet to be. If you have a Bible with you this morning, I invite you up with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, New Testament, Ephesians chapter 3. Now, over our Christmas series, we were in, you know, Matthew and Luke, and Matthew and Luke kind of have the birth narrative of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books in the New Testament, all talk about Jesus. And so if you're looking for a place to start in a Bible reading for the new year, start in the Gospels, start reading through about Jesus, and then you'll get to Acts. And Acts is the story of the early church. God loves his church. And so you see how the church just exploded and what God did. Romans, this great theology and doctrine. And then you come to what's called kind of the Pauline epistles. The apostle Paul was writing letters to these churches that he planted when he was going on mission trips. And so like Corinth, right, First and Second Corinthians, he wrote a letter to the church in Corinth or Galatia and Galatians, wrote a letter there. This is a letter in Ephesians written to the church that met in Ephesus, okay? Now Ephesus was a town kind of like us in a lot of ways, right? I mean, it was a wealthy place. It was a prosperous place. It was a metropolitan area. It's set on a trade route. Uh, it was in Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey for, you know, kind of today where you can kind of picture that scene. It was also, though, a, a pagan place. Um, you know, they had the temple to this Roman goddess, Diana. And Paul, years earlier, had planted a church there. And, and there's like no way this church is going to take off, but it does, right? And it starts growing and thriving. And, and, and I love the book of Ephesians because when Paul's writing to some of these other churches, there were some challenges or dysfunction or some things that were going wrong in those places or even some heresies like in Galatians, Gnosticism. But in Ephesus, man, the church was just thriving. I mean, God was doing great things. And, and so Paul writes this letter to the church and just says, hey, I want to encourage you guys. Know your roots, right? Know your story, how you were founded, what's important there. Know where you are, but also go forward, right? He ends in Ephesians 6 with put on the full armor of God and live it for the kingdom, right? Make a difference, make an impact because God is moving and God is working. And so here in Ephesians chapter 3, here's what the apostle Paul, it says that he says this in verse 14. For this reason I kneel. Now, you can picture the Apostle Paul writing. He's writing from prison in Rome. He's in prison for being a Christian. And that's why he's in prison, okay? So he's in prison in Rome for being a follower of Jesus. And you can picture him kind of getting down on his knees and praying for the church. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Wow. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty powerful prayer, right? I mean, there, there's a lot of meat in that prayer right there. But there's some things I want you to see. First of all, I want you to see this, that Paul's prayer is for the church in Ephesus. And Paul's prayer is for the church in Ephesus. Paul prays for the church. I mean, it's important that we pray for the church. It's important the church is the vehicle by which God accomplishes his work in the world. Secondly, notice this, the church is the family of God united under the love of our Father. And the church is a family. So the church is different, right? The church isn't just an organization. You know, the, the church is an organism. She's alive. And I love that the church is a family. It, it's the body. It's the bride of Christ. Jesus is coming back for his church. Now, I love nonprofits, obviously. I love a lot. You know, there's great people who do great things. But, but Jesus is coming back for the church. And, and the church in Ephesus was making such a tremendous impact in the city because of the, it was fueled by the Spirit of God. And the church loved each other, right? It was a family. And maybe some of you grew up in a small church where everybody was brother, right? Brother Tim, hey, how you doing, brother? Sister Mary, hey, how you doing? You know, it's like brothers. You know, but what they were doing was saying, hey, we're a family. And we're in this. We're going to share the joys. We're also going to walk with each other through the struggles. We're going to be family. 
And that's what the church is, and it's united under the love of our Father, that God is with us, God is for us. Here's what else I want you to notice, that Paul prays the church would know their roots. He's, he's like, I'm praying that you would understand the power of what God's doing. I mean, why does the church thrive? I mean, in Ephesus, are you kidding me? How in the world do Christ followers, there's Paul writing from prison in Rome, there's persecution that's happening, and yet the church is flourishing, and Paul's going, it's only the Spirit of God, Okay. I want you to know the roots. I want you to know what God's doing. I want you to recognize the power that God has over and through his church. I want you to know that. And then the church is to be, he says this, rooted and established in love. He says that's the difference. Uh, one, day, one day Jesus was teaching and a guy comes up to him, this religious leader, and he's kind of trying to trap Jesus a little bit. And he says, hey, Jesus, what's the most important commandment? You know, out of the Old Testament, out of the 613 laws in the Old Testament, what's the most important, right? And Jesus goes, that's easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus established it. Hey, love God, right? And love the people around you. And when the church does that, whoo, it's radical. I mean, when the church says, hey, we're just going to love God, okay, and we're going to love the people around us. And Paul's praying, you are rooted and established in love. And so you live that out. All people matter to God. You focus on him. You fall in love with him. And then he says this. Notice that. He says, in the church and in our lives, he says, love even surpasses knowledge. Okay? It, that's a powerful prayer. There's a lot of times we want to focus kind of on the knowledge part of it. But, but God's going, no, no, no. Listen, I want you to understand that it's about love. I want you to grow deeper and I want you to grow stronger, but, but understand that it's about love. Here, here's the thing, here's the thing. We're called, all called to be a part of a greater story as God's church today. And so as the Apostle Paul is writing to this church in Ephesus, he's saying that you and me, you are the church. You know, in our day, in our generation, you live this out. And if you keep going, I love it, verse 20 and 21, it's kind of the theme verses for Rolling Hills, but. But he says in verse 20, now to him, that's God, right? Now to him who is able. And I don't know what you walked in here with today. I don't know if you came in and, and man, you're just facing some financial struggles or maybe there's relationship challenges. Maybe there's challenges at work. And maybe there's challenges that are happening kind of in your life. But I want you to hear this. God is able. <laughs> God is able. Whatever, whatever you bring in, God is able. And God is greater. And God is with you. And God is for you. Down to him who is able. And he's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Don't you love that? Whatever your best plans for your life are, God can do more. <laughs> Whatever the best things you can do, God can do more in your marriage. God can do more in your family. God can do more in your work. God can do more in your dreams. He is able to do immeasurably more, not just a little bit more, but immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. But look at this, according to his power that is at work within us. He goes, don't forget where it comes from, right? As I bless you, as I give you things, don't forget that you are rooted in love, that you're rooted in Christ, that it's his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church. To him be glory in the church. And in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And the Apostle Paul keeps coming back to this church at Ephesus and saying, Hey guys, listen, remember what God's doing. Know the story of what's happening in the church. Because this is so powerful, this is so powerful. But the roots impact the fruit. Okay? The roots impact the fruit. See, so often we want to concentrate on the fruit, don't we? I mean, you can look at a lot of businesses, a lot of organizations, and they're all concentrating on the metrics and the measurements. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all looking at the, the fruit. But if you get down to it, if you have the right roots, the fruit's going to come. The fruit's going to happen. This is so true in our individual Christian lives, right? See, what is the fruit of the Spirit? What is the fruit of you knowing Christ and living in Christ? What's the fruit? Well, it tells us, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So in your life, there ought to be fruit. But see, what happens sometimes is we concentrate on the fruit. 
We're like, I want joy. I want joy. I'm going to have joy. It's going to be joy. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be joyful all the time. And then somebody comes along and, and they make us mad. And we're like, oh, I'm trying to be joyful. But, you know, we're just concentrating on joy, right? Or I want patience. I'm going to be patient. I want patience. I'm going to want now. I'm going to be patient right now. Right now, I'm going to be patient. I'm just going to be patient right here. I'm gonna, in this situation. I really want to get upset with my kids. I really want to get frustrated. But I'm going to be patient. It doesn't work, right? Why? Because the roots impact the fruit. And for you and I to know this, that as we grow deeper in Christ, the fruit will happen. We don't need more joy. We need more Jesus. <laughs> right? right? You know what I'm saying? Right? We don't need more patience. We need more Jesus. And we get more deeper into Jesus, then the fruit's going to happen. And that's why it's so true that when you look at this, the outward, most people spend more time on the outward than the inward. But here's the outward, right? We can spend a lot of time putting on our makeup. We can spend a lot of time, you know, looking good. We can spend a lot of time working out. We can take a time on the outward. And a lot of people do because they want to look good for your Instagram photos, right? You know, so we're going to look good on the outward. But the fact is this, it's really the inward. It's really the inward that we should be concentrating on. It's the inward, it's the character and the integrity that impacts the outward. And so the Apostle Paul is writing to the church there, hey, remember, you are rooted in Christ. You grow deeper in love. God will take care of the fruit. God will do a work, but you stay rooted in him. And that's so true for us as believers Grow deeper in Christ. Uh, Psalm chapter one, I love, I love, I love this. It says this, it says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or, or, or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, <laughs> right? It's important who you surround yourself with, okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. And he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields it's fruit in season whose leaf does not wither. And I love these last words, right? Whatever he does prospers. Whatever he does prospers. You, you know what that's saying, right? He's like a tree planted by streams of water. I, I love this, you know, picture for our new series, right? Rooted and you see this beautiful tree. Some of you, you have a tree, you kind of remember growing up. There was this just spectacular tree or you see these amazing trees around and they're just big and they're strong. But it's not the outward, right? They got these deep roots, He's planted by streams of water. It's the nourishment that's coming in from the Word of God. And meditating and thinking about God's Word. It doesn't mean you're just reading all day, but hey, you're reading the Word and then you're listening to Christian music or you're putting things in your mind and your heart. You're, you're focused on God. And then it's going to yield its fruit in season, right? And whatever He does prospers. That's my prayer for you. Hey, I want whatever you do to prosper. I want your marriage to prosper. I want your career to prosper. I want the things that God's put in your life to prosper. I want you to be a great parent. I want you to raise great kids. I want you to prosper. But I'm telling you, right, it's not just concentrating on the fruit. It's concentrating on the root and growing deeper in God's word and God's truth. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's his story, but it's also our story together, and it's your story. It's his story. It's our story. It's your story. You, you know, when you read the Old Testament, they tell the same story a lot over and over, right? You know, in Exodus, right, in Exodus, when they are slaves in Egypt and they call out because they have no help and no hope. I mean, they're literally slaves, the Egyptian army over them and a million plus people. I mean, there's no way out, right? You're not getting out. Nobody in history gets out of that, right? And until they call out to God and God sends a deliverer, Moses, and, and 10 plagues happen and Pharaoh says, okay, go ahead and leave. You're like, just walk out. And they literally walk out. Right? And so God says, hey, every year have the Passover, celebrate, remember what I've done. You know, and so you read the story again in the Psalms, you read the story again in the prophets, you read the story again in the New Testament. Why? Because God's saying, I'm faithful. And I want you to remember that because you're going to face other challenges and struggles. And instead of just looking at circumstances, look at me. I am faithful and I am with you and I am for you. You, you know, as God's church today here at Rolling Hills, man, we have some incredible stories that God has done. I mean, it's just so awesome. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we started 15 years ago. We had 15 people in an apartment clubhouse, and we're doing a Bible study on Thursday nights. And we didn't have some big agenda or something. We just said, hey, we want to love God. We want to love the people around us. We want to pray together. <laughs> and so we started meeting at Lara Farms right over there in Cool Springs and, and just praying over people and saying, God, what do you want to do? And some of you were there at that time. Thank you. I mean, it was just, it was exciting. And then 
And then all of a sudden it started to grow. And so we were like, okay, let's go down to Marriott. So we went to the Marriott Hotel right there. You kind of drive by it all the time. You see it all the time. We, we met there in the ballroom, right? For a while, we had church in the Marriott because we knew that, you know, the building's not the church. The church is the church, right? It's the body of Christ, loving one another and believing one another. So we met there in the ballroom. We would go down to have baptism in the indoor swimming pool at the Marriott. So like we would finish service. We'd go like, hey, we're going down to the pool. We're going to do baptism. We would get down there. There'd be people swimming around their bikinis. We're like, hey, can y'all move down there? We're going to kind of do Baptism is a little awkward right here. Yeah, we're going to do baptism right here. Like, okay, you know, so, so we're doing baptism right in the indoor swimming pool. It was awesome because it was life change, right? And people falling in love with Jesus and seeing their lives change and watching their futures change. And it was just exciting in their eternities. And, and, and I remember we were at the Marriott one time. We were going to do baptism, and then their pool was blocked or something. And, and so we said, we're going to do baptism outside. So people in our church had a pool, and, and we were going to go out there, but it was February. But they had a heated pool, okay? And so we said, hey, we're going to do this heated pool. We had a couple of guys, these men who were going to be baptized. And, and so we get out there, and it's like snowing, sleeting when we show up to do baptism. And, uh, you know, we have a little church, right? We're all gathered around the outdoor swimming pool. And the two guys pull up. They arrive. And uh, I go, hey, guys, um, I've got some good news and bad news. And they're like, what's the uh, bad news? Give us the bad news first. I said, well, the bad news is this, that the uh, pool heater broke. <laughs> And it's snowing, it's sleeting. And they go, what's the good news? And I'm like, you're getting baptized. <laughs> I mean, praise God. You know, like, yeah. I mean, you can see it's, it's snowing, it's sleeting there. You can see it's the quickest baptism ever. Like, <laughs> take a picture, dunk me, let me count, you know. And it was exciting. Some of you are like, praise God, we've got a baptistry here indoors, yeah, because I'm going to be baptized. But I mean, it's just awesome. You know, you're just holding on to God and you're just watching God do it the things that only God could do. And then the Marriott would come to us and they would say, hey, you can't be here next week. There's an Amway convention and they pay a lot more money than you do, you know. So we met in a bridal shop. We met in a, you know, a, a, you know, a barn. I mean, we were just finding anywhere we could to meet with us. The kind of thing was, hey, if you could find us, you could worship with us because we didn't know where we were going to be. And then the Marriott came and said, I'll never forget, this is like January of 2005. They said, hey, you can't be here, you know, February 7, 14, 21, 28, or March 14th. I'm like, great, March 7th, that's open, you know. Um, here we are, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? And we were praying. Like, God, what do we do? And so we started prayer driving around Cool Springs, right? The movie theater in Cool Springs, because it was cold, it was January, so we'd prayer drive instead of prayer walk. And we were just praying, God, open the door for us to maybe be here. And I remember talking to the people and they would say, no, we don't have churches. It's a movie theater. We don't do that. And I'm like, but please, you know, it'll be nice. And, and they're like, no, no. And finally one day, like literally like the last week could be at the Marriott and, and I'm in my office and, and I, we have these little offices and I'm kneeling down, I'm praying. And I'm telling you, it was just the Holy Spirit. You know how you just, the still small voice and God just says, do this. And you're like, ah, oh, are you sure? And you're like, God spoke and said, go out to their corporate headquarters, drive out there and, and talk to them again. And I'm like, God, I've been out there multiple times. It's like 45 minutes away. It's in Gallatin, right? I'm not, God's going, no, go. And I'm like, ah. So I get in the car, drive out to Gallatin. I walk in. There's a receptionist, Tara. I'm like, hey, Tara. She's like, hey, Jeff. You know, <laughs> I am back again. You know, <laughs> here he is. So I'm like, John here, you know. And that day she goes, well, actually, no, John's not with us anymore. Um, we actually have a new guy. Today's his first day. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I, I was praying, God, you know, God told me, yeah, it is. And she's like, well, he just moved here from Texas and he's really busy. And, and I said, I get it. I said, but I'm from Texas too, you know? And, and so he kind of looks around the corner. I'm like, you're from Texas, I'm from Texas. So I just kind of walk by and we start talking. <laughs> and, <laughs> I love Tara, but we were like, okay, we gotta go. And we start talking. And, and when I walked in, I'll never forget this. I walked in his office. And he's listening to a Mercy Me song. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, God brought you here for this. And, and so I started, so I said, Thomas, hey, we're a young church. We need a place to meet. We'd love to meet in Cool Springs. And he goes, man, it's my first day. And I'm like, I know. And I, he goes, let me call Atlanta and see what I could do. I said, okay, call Atlanta. And he goes, when do you need to know by? And I go, well, today's Tuesday, and our last day is Sunday. So uh, Saturday would be great, you know. And sure enough, I'm driving in Cool Springs on Carruthers and the phone rings and he's like, all right, Jeff, as long as you guys are out by noon, you can move in. And uh, so we went to the church. I know, it's just a miracle. I mean, it's like, you know, he's like, okay, God, thank you. And so he said, hey, everybody say goodbye to the Marriott. We're heading over to the movie theater and 
we moved in. And the cool part is like Thomas, he was here for like three months. They moved into Atlanta. So I always believe that God just brought him here for that, you know. But we met in the movie theater for five years, right? We met in the movie theater. It's like you're walking in. You're like, okay, we got church. And then what show times? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> See what movies I can hit after this. You know, maybe I'll just stay. Hey, you know. And like all these people around. And we were people, people are popping popcorn, you know. We're walking in. And we would do baptism right there in the lobby in a horse trough. People are, you know, popping popcorn, people are coming in, and it's like, hey, here we are, getting baptized, you know, and it was just exciting, setting up a tear down every week. We used 10 different theaters. We'd have babies in one theater, you know, and so, I mean, we're bringing in baby beds from a U-Haul, and we had all these people, and we did a big three-on-three tournament, some may, may remember that. If you were there, it was great, thank you. And then we were there for a little while, we were like, okay, God, what are we going to go here? I mean, what's going to be next? I mean, Landed Cool Springs is kind of expensive, uh, so I don't know where we're going to go or what we're going to do. And, and I'll never forget, we all just started to pray. And there's something powerful that happens as the Apostle Paul shows us when you pray for the church and you pray for God's work in the world. And we started praying, and a lady on our finance team says, hey, Jeff, there's a guy, and he owns a warehouse. He's one of our clients. It's on the market for several million dollars, but hey, you can go and meet with him. And so we went and met with him, and I'll never forget, he said, hey, um, I'm also a believer. And I've been watching Rolling Hills, and he goes, when I bought this warehouse, it was the old Georgia boot factory, I just believed God had a bigger plan for it. He goes, I believed God was going to do something with it. And we were like, great, you know. And he said, yeah, but it's still a several million dollars. We're like, oh, well. And uh, he said, but here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you some money for the down payment. And we were like, oh, well, that, that's great, but we still have zero dollars, right? We're a five-year-old church, average age, 27 a lot of college students, a lot of young adults. We don't have any money. We don't have like a big savings account or something. And he's like, well, okay. And he said, just pray about it. And we were like, we'll pray about it. And I'll never forget, we went to the church and we said, okay, guys, one Sunday, we're gonna come, we're just gonna bring an offering. And let's just trust God. And, and, and everybody stretch, right? Go home and pray about it, but like savings or your retirement account or whatever, let, let's just all stretch. Let's just all join together and let's see what God wants to do. And on one Sunday, we kind of put this altar down front and we were sitting there in Theater 15. By the way, if you ever go to Theater 15, that's where we were, right? And, and we were up there in the Cool Springs Theater and we just started praying and people came down and we were just bringing our gifts to the Lord. All of our kids started coming in, bringing their piggy banks. And I mean, they're dumping their piggy banks here. And we're just like, God, we're just going to place it in your hands, whatever it is. And I mean, here we are, just a few hundred people, right? They were gathered together. I mean, just kind of a smaller church. And and I'll never forget after we just gave. <laughs> and that afternoon, uh, we had a team of people who were counting the money and they called and they said, Jeff, you wouldn't believe it, but the church just gave $1 million. I I'm like, no, you're lying. You know, like, and they're like, no, seriously, seriously. It, we just can't believe it. It, it. it wasn't like some big gift. It was just like everybody just putting a little bit in the hands of Jesus. It's the fish and the loaves and Jesus starts multiplying and taking it and going, watch this. And so we go back to the guy. We said, hey, hey, we wouldn't believe it. We have a little bit of money now. Can we still buy the building? He goes, I didn't think you guys were interested. So I got three leases. <laughs> I haven't built them out yet, but uh, I've got these three tenants. And, and we said, well, hey, would you still sell us the building? He said, okay. We said, would you still give us that down payment? <laughs> he goes, okay. And he said, would you still give us? We said, would you give us those leases? He said, okay. And so by the grace of God, you guys were sitting in a place that's 143,000 square feet with three tenants who helped pay the mortgage on this place. And that's only God. I mean, it's only God. And when you start to realize these things, you just go, God, we, we don't have to plan our gym. We just want to love you. We want to love people around us. We want to see people's lives changed. And, and for your name and your glory, and God goes, okay, you just follow me and hold on to me and let me handle the rest. You trust in me. See, as Christ followers, as Christ followers, I want us to get this. We are a part of God's greater story in the world. We are a part of something way bigger than ourselves. Do you know, think about this, the church in Ephesus, even facing persecution, even under Roman oppression at that time, Roman rule in the Jerusalem in the early church, but God was doing something that would just radically change the world. I mean, in a world where it was like dark, it was fearful, everybody was scared. I mean, it was all about me and God was planting the seed of the gospel that would radically change. And the vehicle for taking the gospel to the nations was going to be the church. And it was churches, churches throughout history who were the ones who started hospitals and schools and hospice 
in orphanages, in soup kitchens, in clothes closets, and taking care of the least and the last and the lost for the glory of God. And God has changed the world through the church. See, as Christ followers, we're a part of something bigger than us, and God still works through the local church. And when we begin to move from me to we, it's not just, hey, what can the church do for me? But it's like us coming in and locking arms together and saying, hey, we're all a part of something bigger than us. And we're not here just to be consumers. We're here to be contributors. Father, what do you want to do through your church? And we all have an individual story of his love and grace in our lives. Guys, as you grow deeper in Christ, it strengthens the body. See, your obedience to God matters to more than just you. Your roots in the depth of your love and the grace of what God's doing in your life is going to impact your marriage, your kids, your nieces, your nephews, the people around you, the kids you teach on Sunday, the kids that watch you and model what Christ is like. Your individual story is powerful. And for you and I to know that, for us to grow deep roots in him. Here's what Jesus says in John 15. Jesus says this. He says, guys, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And so your call as a disciple of Christ, our call as a church is to remain in Christ to remain in him. See, I love this, I love this, but miracles happen when we are rooted in Christ and grow deeper in love. Miracles happen. And that's what you see throughout the Bible. That's what you see when you're part of the church. That's what you see in your own life when you are rooted in Christ. Yesterday, I, um, I did the funeral for a man in our church, 70 years old, uh, Ron Howe. And um, Ron was the first graduating class at Stratford High School here and went to the University of Tennessee. I uh, love Tennessee. But it was after college that he had a friend who invited him to church. And the power of an invitation. I'm going to tell you, you have friends, you have coworkers, you have neighbors. And, and I'll tell you, when Ron was invited to that church and he met Jesus, his life was forever changed. It didn't mean everything was easy. Ron was married. He was married for 16 years. And then his wife and their Late 30s, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And his wife, Suzanne, went home to be with Jesus. And now all of a sudden, Ron finds himself as a single dad with a 14-year-old daughter, a 12-year-old daughter, and a 5-year-old son. And Ron, <laughs> just talking to him in the past, he said, you know what, that was the time I just held on to Jesus with everything. And he said, you know, I made a decision then. He said, I made a decision that I was going to get even more involved in church because I needed it for my kids and my kids needed it. And he said, I started taking my kids to church. And it was back then when we went to church, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, right? You're at church all the time. He goes, we just didn't miss. And he said, because I knew my kids needed to be around godly influence. I knew my kids needed that in their life. And, they, and you, you become the product of the top five people you're around. I don't know if you know that, but, but your kids need this. And he said, I wanted my kids rooted in Christ. I wanted them to have a spiritual foundation. I wanted them to be around other people who were going to help them. I knew I needed it, but I knew they needed it as much or more. And what was amazing is God brought a godly woman into his life a couple years later. He was married to Jill for 31 years. But yesterday at the funeral, seeing all four of his grown kids stand up and talk about the Lord and looking at his seven grandkids and, and looking at how much God's done in their lives and in their families, and I just thought, here's Ron, man. He woke up on January 1st and he saw the face of Jesus. And he looked at his family down from heaven and he just saw this tree that he had planted. And he saw the fruit of kids that are older and grandkids and generations that have been impacted for God's glory. And he heard Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. You guys, you're rooted in Christ. Grow deep roots in him. Don't drift. Don't just get caught up in the world and where it's going. You say, for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What has God done in your life? What has God done in your life? It, think about your spiritual roots. Think about 
You remember when you were saved? Do you remember the joy of your salvation? Do you remember committing your life to Christ? Maybe you remember your baptism. Maybe it wasn't outside in the snow and the sleep, but you remember, I mean, you remember just the joy. And you remember saying, hey, I'm going to follow you, Jesus, all my days. I am yours, wholly and completely yours. You are rooted. Hey, what are your spiritual roots in those markers in your life? Remember the stories. Remember what God has done. And like the Apostle Paul, I want you to know this. I kneel for you. I pray every day for you. I pray for your family. I pray for your church. God is doing something incredible in you. You hold on to him. You grow deeper in him. You grow deeper in the love of Christ and the love for others. And you watch God do what only God can do in your life. Because the best is still to come. And God is with you. And he is for you. I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. I don't know where you are today. I really don't. Maybe somebody invited you today and you're just kind of checking this whole Christianity thing out. I want to tell you, it all comes down to Jesus. And God is here and he has drawn you to himself. And he has invited you into a deeper relationship with him. And right where you sit, you just say, God, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to know you. I want to follow you. Forgive me my sins. Redeem me. Restore me. It's the beginning of a new year, but this is the time to say, hey, I want to, I want to grow deep roots in Christ. For me, for my family, for generations, I want to invest in what matters. And God, forgive me when I get caught up in the outward. God, today I just want to put a stake in the ground on the inward. I want to know you. And maybe you're here today and God's speaking to you and, and God's saying, hey, this is the year. This is the year to live it all for me. This is the year just to be committed wholly to me. So, Father God, here we are, your disciples. And, Father, as we look forward to 2018, God, we, we just thank you for what you've done for us in the past. That when we were dead in our sins and our transgressions, God, you made us alive in Christ. And, God, you love us so much. God, you know our names we are your sons and your daughters. And Father, because you've been faithful in the past, we know you'll be faithful in the future. And God, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We know, God, that you are already in 2018 and 19 and 20, and our call is just to grow deeper in you and to love you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and to love the people around us, Father. So I pray, God, a blessing today over every person here. I pray a blessing over their marriages. I pray a blessing over their families. I pray a blessing over their future marriages. I pray, God, that you would be with them, you would strengthen them. And God, that they would be deeply rooted in you. Thank you, Father, for your presence this morning, for your love and for your grace. Thank you for Jesus. In your name we pray, amen, amen.